there's no guards there. Should we find out what it was? And welcome back to this very spooky episode of My Rail. In the last episode, we worked on the ghost train in the haunted house that I'm currently sitting in. I've done a little work on the dressing of various rooms that we want to do stuff in. In this episode, though, I thought we'd cover off some of the more spooky and interesting and mechanical builds that are going to go into making this place a bit more of a scary. So, let's get started. Okay, so before we get too far into this, I thought I'd show you what I've done so far, just to spruce things up in here. And as you can see, we're actually at the entrance of the building here, with some paintings on the wall. And of course, this is episode 30, so it is the world download, which means if you want to view any of these cool pictures that are on the wall here, you need this fax texture pack. I can't provide the download it. But as you can see, we've got various things on the wall, we've got some lighting, uh, various other things just to make it look more interesting. And of course, it is Halloween at the moment, so the trains are slightly ghosted. This is something that Railcraft does, and if you haven't seen the trains, you can always change them with the Crowbar of Seasons. By right-clicking your thing here, you can go from Halloween to Christmas, so there's our Christmas trains are there. And if we want to go back to none, which is the standard ones, we'll go back to here. And during, of course, Halloween and Christmas, this doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do now is we'll do some of the fancy stuff. So let me look at that, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the first thing I thought we'd do is have a cart that magically just appears on the track, and then later on disappears on the track. Now, it should look really good with the ghost effect that's currently going on with the carts. But even still, without that, it should still really look quite good. It would be nice if we could have an entity in there, such as a creeper or a zombie or something. But I'm having a few problems trying to work that one out, so we haven't been able to do that. But if nothing else, we can at least try and get this to work. So what I'm thinking is we'll drop the cart down here. It'll come around. And it'll we'll pick it up about here. And hopefully we'll be able to drop it just before the player gets there, so it's just in front of the player, and then gets picked up before the player gets these on. Now you can see that I've already put a hole here where we're going to be able to drop it down. I'll take these two out and place down a, a cart dispenser, which will go about here, and a train detector, which we want to face that way. Uh, and we'll set this down to one because the train that comes in, the actual real train with the player in it, is going to be a uh, at least two because it's going to have a locomotive on it. So having it one will pick up on just carts. Place that into there. And now what they'll do is when the cart comes along, it should pick it up. So we'll just give it a test. Stick in there and forward, and you can see it took it. So if you're in it, of course, it's going to be a problem, but we won't have the player in any point. Now, of course, that's gone into here. So what we actually need to do now is we'll go down to here. And this is the underground section, just keeping the lights on so you guys can see things. Might take this lot out. And we will stick in a hopper. Because I haven't found out a way of taking the carts out without a hopper. Uh, so we'll put one of these, probably, oh, do that. Uh, and now what that will do, of course, is it will take the carts out of there and stick into here. And then we will put the another cart fence here. So it will take the cart from here, uh, which is this guy, should immediately disappear and appear into here, so we can then give it a redstone signal to send it out. Over here, we're going to set up some track, just a normal track. We'll run it down along here run it down here into what I've already stuck for an elevator. So remember our elevator tracks from the last episode, they go up there and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, we'll need to run a control track probably there just to give it a push so when it gets out of here it gets pushed. And we need to apply a redstone signal. Now unfortunately we can't apply a static one, we have to apply something that changes. So I've got integrated dynamics here which provides a nice way of doing that. 
Uh, and what we'll do is we will set it up so it's running a signal from there, logic cable, and it'll read its signal from probably can I do it from there? Like that, cool. Uh, and if we go into here, we should be able to see a redstone clock. There it is there. Now I could make it so it reads the if there's anything in there, but hopefully the redstone clock won't be too often, so we can do it that way, and it makes it a lot easier to do. Put this into here, and now that should, if we put a card into there, should pick it up. Perfect, look at that. Uh, the other thing we'll need to do though is place some control tracks down just so it doesn't get stuck like it just did. Uh, place those here and place it up. And now those will push the cart along, it'll then bring it up here. Now if we go up here, so this is the inside of one of those walls. Uh, we'll go up to here and I'm thinking we should be able to just push this off, but I'm also thinking we'll need a, a locking track so that we can hold it at this point. Uh, and I'm thinking put that there. Grab a crowbar. We already had a crowbar, but I'll grab another one because we can. Uh, stick that into train boarding mode, which always gives it a push. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't need to throw it. Not train boarding mode. We just need a normal boarding mode. But not a train. And then we'll give it a push that way. We'll give it a redstone signal, which we've got here. So that gives that a redstone signal, it gives it a push. Now, of course, what I could have done was just put another train dispenser here. It looked quite nice. But I wanted to make it a little secret. And if I put it in the ground here, you'd see it appear. Plus, of course, if we, when I was testing out the mobs, I tested this. And it worked mostly, as I said. But the only problem is it would kill the mobs, which isn't very helpful. So let's give this a test, though. So we'll put a minecart in there and that should take it cool and we'll send it along there and if we come back out here here there it seems like it might have stopped so we might need to give a control track as well place a control track there and we might just put around like that. So that should do that. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is down here in the nether section. And I don't know about you, but the most scariest thing in the nether for me, especially when I can't fly, is a ghast. But I would like to know your thoughts, so leave them down in the comment down below. But I'm not going to spawn a ghast, because there's not a large amount of room here. But Integrated Dynamics provides a really good way of having a ghast and having it do what you want on your command and really what I want to be able to do is scare people as they fall into the section into thinking the ghast has seen them and shooting at them. So what I was thinking is this is where we actually fall in. So you come in from all the way up there and you drop down into this track. And I'm thinking if we put in here Probably about there, like that. Oops. And we'll just stick that back on there with its control track on top. Like that. So now of course what will happen is the cart will fall on here and it should be detected. And what we'll do is just make a little room. Probably about this much is all we really need to do this whole thing. Compared to having a 5x5 five five for a ghast, this is it. Uh, and what we're going to do is we put in a redstone reader. So this is going to read when the cart comes in. But it's also going to be used for us to... We're not going to read it. Oh, I need to put a cable in there. That's right. Uh, so we're going to here. And we can also use it for a redstone clock. So if we place a piece in there, 
we'll go on and set this to be uh, let's go every 90 seconds or 90 ticks I should say so every 90 ticks we want to output a signal so we'll put that back into there I don't think it matters I think you can change this dynamically uh, we'll put that into there though and we'll come back and read the redstone signal at a later date What we're going to do though is we'll also place down a audio writer, which we are going to put. Ah, then we'll probably do. We'll go in to the logic programmer, and here we're going to make ourselves a couple of strings. String number one is going to be empty. That's it. Just empty like that. That's string number one. String number two is going to contain entity dot dot. Let's go with the ambient for now. Ambient for now. Stick that into there. So what the audio writer does is it takes the string and it will play back that sound. So of course if you could find a Minecraft sound and you can put it in there, you can make it play. So in this case we want it to make it the ambient sound every 90 seconds. Or 90 ticks. The other thing we're going to have to do is put in a choice. Uh, put that into there. So when the redstone clock ticks over, we want to play the ambient noise and we want to otherwise output string because you are uh, a blank string. Now you always need to give it a blank string, otherwise, it won't let you do any, it won't let you output anything here. Put them to here, go down to there, go down to there, and we'll just quickly name these. With these guys named, we can actually see underneath variable IDs that we're using the variable, the RS clock short, the ambient noise, and the empty. So you can quickly work out, okay, as a choice, based on the short, play the ambient, otherwise do nothing. We're going to place the... Uh, sound one, this one here, the ambient, into here, and of course it'll give a back that error because we don't have anything in the network for those variables. Our variable store in, we'll put the empty noise, we'll put the ambient, and of course our RS clock, and hopefully we get some ambient gas noises, which are quite cool. One of the other things, of course, we can do, though, is we can go under here and say, okay, let's play the frequency. Now, this is not something I'll probably do, but we can set it to, say, poo. And you get squeaky ghast. Or, of course, we can go, go in the reverse. We go into here and we could say 0 0.5. Mm. <laughs> and now we get... Scary ghast. Of course, I'm not going to use this because I just want the, the standard noises for the ghast to play. But I still think that's quite cool. You could use it for quite some cool things. So we've got ourselves the amb uh, ambient noise. And we'll just... <laughs> we'll just put, put that back to one. So we get our, our standard noise. And what we're going to do though, we're going to add another uh, audio writer. And we're going to put that probably about there. Uh, and in this one here, we're going to read the redstone signal off this guy. And we'll go into our logic programmer. Actually, no. Let me create another one of these sounds for the shooting noise, and I'll be back in a second. The next thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to make it detect, once again, choice. Uh, actually, sorry, we need the empty string. Uh, and back to choice. Because we're now going to go, if the redstone trigger is set, then we're going to output our special variable card we already made in the last one. Otherwise, empty. So yes, we're using the empty again. 
again. So this one here has empty in it, and this one here has empty in it. But this will basically end up making it so that if we place this into here, hopefully, uh, and we go and place our trigger one up there, we'll place the empty string there maybe, um, and that will go to there. There. So on the first thing, so our ambience back. On the first uh, time we actually place down a cart, we get the noise. Now of course that will keep playing while our cart is sitting on there, but normally the cart will disappear off and it won't be a problem. So that's quite cool. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to set this up a little bit better and then we'll get the re next one ready. Uh, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so just looking at the outside of the house here, and I was thinking, it looks bright in some places, other places it doesn't look bright. But really, we need to make it like someone's living in it and doing something really evil. And I was thinking, you know some of those movies where they have a flashing light, and it's like the power is being used too much, or it's not quite getting there. That would look quite cool, and I'm thinking in that little window there would actually be a really good place to put it. So if we go down, if we go into here, uh, I'm just going to cheat and go in this way. Uh, we can go up to here. I was thinking if we go in and set up so that we have, say, a... What do we got here? So we could set up a randomizer maybe? So we put a randomizer there. Face it that way. We'll give it gives a lot. Uh, and we'll put a redstone signal onto there. And you can see that it'll, it'll randomly choose which ones to use. We can set this down to only use one output as well. Uh, we've clicked enough times. There we go. So now of course it's just flashing that. We place that like that. What is it? Uh, place it like that. Now, of course, you can see the light's flashing, uh, which could be really bad for frames. Uh, and I'm thinking, though, let's just go. Can we let's cheat? A nice, easy way of cheating here. Let's go up this way. Uh, grab. Yeah, here. So you can see there, it's flashing. It's not quite what I'm thinking though, but it is very... You get the idea. Uh, so we go back this way though, we could then add in... Maybe... Let's get rid of this guy. And we'll add in, let's say, a timer or a state cell. Maybe a state cell. So it can hold on to that signal. We'll need that facing downwards. Uh, and now if we give a redstone signal, it'll work, and it should hold it for however long. And now you can see it's flashing, and the moment it finishes, it'll stop in that state. Cool. Uh, so we'll set this though, I'm thinking about maybe three seconds would be long enough for a... Do that. Yeah, maybe. And you can see it, it randomizes whether it's on or off, which is even cooler, because that means, of course, you had the power went off, or the power came back, or whatever. And I'm also thinking, let's put a timer in there instead of a uh, lever. And now, of course, we're flickering a lot more often. Let's just increase this. Let's say every 12 seconds it flashes. And we'll also run. Can I run? I'm going to cheat and run it along the bottom here. Let's try and get this one doing the same thing. Ok, 
Okay, so let's test that out, see what it looks like. The only thing I don't like about it is it, go, it has that clunking noise, which is one of the things I don't like about the timers in Project Red. Uh, let's just go back to that time. About every 12 seconds it should do something, so let's just go in here. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, yeah, no, I think they work perfectly, because that flicker just means something's going on, we don't quite know what it is. Okay, I think we've run out of time on this episode, but we've got quite a cool ghost train here. And don't forget, this is episode 30, so you guys can see and ride this yourself by just installing or updating the Mile Rail Pack inside the Torch Launcher. And that top floor is almost empty. So the challenge I'm going to put to you is to see if you can add some more scary things in there. And I'd love to see what you come up with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here. If you've got any questions, suggestions, or thought this was a great idea, leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and like what you saw, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya!